my name is Abby. I am a tour guide here at Space Center Houston, and you are watching The Collector Zone. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to The Collector Zone. Today, we're hanging out at NASA. This is gonna be killer. We meet in an hour of change and challenge, in a decade of hope and fear, in an age of both knowledge and ignorance. The greater our knowledge increases, the greater our ignorance unfolds. No man can fully grasp how far and how fast we have come. But condense, if you will, the 50,000 years of man's recorded history in a time span of about a half a century. Stated in these terms, we know very little about the first 40 years, except at the end of them, advanced man had learned to use the skins of animals to cover them. Then about 10 years ago, under this standard, man emerged from his caves to construct other kinds of shelter. Only five years ago, man learned to write and use a cart with wheels. Christianity began less than two years ago. The printing press came this year. And then less than two months ago, during this whole 50 year span of human history, the steam engine provided a new source of power. Newton explored the meaning of gravity. Last month, electric lights and telephones and automobiles and airplanes became available. Only last week did we develop penicillin and television and nuclear power. This is a breathtaking pace. And such a pace cannot help but create new ills as it dispels old. So it is not surprising that some would have us stay where we are a little longer to rest, to wait, if this capsule history of our progress teaches us anything, it is that man in his quest for knowledge and progress is determined and cannot be deterred. We shall send to the moon, 240,000 miles away, a giant rocket more than 300 feet tall on an untried mission to an unknown celestial body and then return it safely to Earth. But why, some say, the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why, 35 years ago, fly the Atlantic? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone. And therefore, as we set sail, we ask God's blessing on the most hazardous and dangerous greatest adventure on which man has ever embarked. Welcome to Space Center Houston. And today we don't have a problem because we're here hanging out, checking out all the cool stuff. As you know on my channel, been watching. I've been wanting to come here since I was a little kid. And here we are.
How badass is this? Man, this is super tall. How cool is this? Hopefully you guys can read this. See how much they changed in 20 years. Yeah. 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 How cool is that? Yeah. Not sure you can see that. So they, so they wouldn't punch holes in it. That's scoop. That's just like I said, this is soup you read on the side. Yeah, so this is Conrad's. Huh? That's the scoop they use the, the, the that's very light it's aluminum. Huh? Well, there's so many dollars Yeah, I'll kind of connect it all stuff. But they put those things on the thumb, I don't know. Something happens to the other guy. You gotta think. There's two guys there. Something bad happens to the other guy. Yeah. He trips his packs of suit. He's dead. You're gonna. Oh. I mean, so there was like back and back and back and back. Or you have to have the other guy leave. You're dead in there. You gotta have all your stuff sealed up. This is so cool. You don't have. You got like an hour to get back. So they have contingency after contingency demo. Yeah. Check this out, guys. Mission Control. It's Major Tom. Checking out the space station. About as big as a football field, I guess. There's measurements. And then here, spa details.
Check this out, guys. How cool is that? Tell you what, growing up, the space shuttle was everything. Countdown to a glass top, I guess. So we're hanging out, about ready to take off. <gasps> oh! <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was the booster separation. <laughs> wow. That is cool. Whoa, look at this. My special guest. This is Diana, and you said you would get sicker. I would get sicker than a dog if I had to be on one of these things. And let's see how you're hanging out. Whoa. Very That'd be small. Me over it, hanging upside down, puking. Let me give you a perspective of the state of the. Uh, What's it called here? Amorous? I don't know. Yeah, she's hanging from the top right there. It's a little small capsule. Orion? Orion? Pretty cool. Let's see here. Here's the outside of it. Oh, yeah, that's the Orion. The Orion. So that's what we're just looking at right here. Pretty killer. Whoa. Check this out, guys. I remember as a kid watching the space shuttle go up into space. Here's a model of it. Sorry about the glare and the shadows. There you go. Wow. This is super cool. Check this out, guys. Skylab. Uh oh. <laughs> What'd you find? Oh my god. This is so cool. See, that's where I'd get sick. Now you'll get used to it because you won't become an astronaut. This is, this is so cool. Wow. 
Usually when I do these video tours with you guys, I see stuff I miss in person. Oh my gosh. Oh. What you want? Two second showers. Well, you have to stay clean. Oh look. You have to eat. And this one is their sleep compartment. Oh my lord, I have claustrophobia. Wait a minute, where's the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> I want to see a space toilet. Waste management. There you go. Not. He's a bag. It's yeah, like a it's in their suit. Or something. Yeah, I think it's in their suit. A suit. It's. Nah, there is an actual toilet. Really? No, I've heard. This yeah. Thing. Costs a lot of money, apparently. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, would make a mess. <laughs> well, wasn't that cool? Let's check this out, guys. How cool is that? Now look at this. It's a Snoopy cap. And a Sony tape recorder. So if you're ever wondering if Sony and Snoopy went to space, there's your answer. <laughs> well, probably not the real Snoopy we all know and love. Sorry, it's so dark in here, guys. Hopefully you can see all this, but the glare is working against me. See a Snoopy? Mm -hmm. I wonder if they call it Snoopy Cat because he would wear one in the cartoon. And look at here, guys. There's glass here. <laughs> I was going all the way in. That Ruby thing again. And look what we got here. It's a space toilet. No, I'm joking. Oh, wow. One of the actual control units. We'll be taking a tour of that today. Permission control? Yeah. I believe so. Yeah. Moon rocks. I want to see what's in that tablet so bad. <laughs> look at this. Oh, look. Apollo 17. Oh, they're actual ones? Yeah. That's what I was hoping for. Actual rocks from the moon. So there's a number right there. This is a little bit about it. So let's do this so we can see the numbers. That's from Apollo 13. Apollo 15. Apollo 16 and Apollo 17. Whoa. How killer is that? Whoa, let's check this out. Wow. What'd you find? They said they started this project on guess what date? December 7th. Hey, my birthday. All the cool stuff usually happens on my birthday. Wow. Recreation of the moon.
Look at that. Wow. How cool is that, guys? Next to the big old moon rocks. Check this out, guys. This is the Apollo 11 command module. All 17. Apollo 17? I said what? All oh, 11? I said 11. Sorry, guys. But look, it flew on December 7th, 1972. I was born in 1965 on December 7th. I was alive during this. And I remember. <laughs> kind of. I'm lying to you. I don't really remember, but I kind of remember. Space stuff was really on the news a lot. And what we got here, the flag from the, uh... Is that the actual flag that flew? Our flag flew to the moon aboard America. Oh, wow. That challenger, whoa. I have so much respect. He gave your lives for space travel today. Wow, there you guys. See, told you there's a space toilet. But look, roasted quail in a can. Is that what you want to eat for dinner tonight? In a can. We got here. Oh, shadows. I know the. The shadows. Sorry, guys, but the shadows. But we're looking at space food. What is this? Rice with salmon, not salmon, salmon, salmon. I say salmon. Sausage patty. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Once again, guys, I'm sorry about the shadows. And then there's sleeping quarters over there. Sleeping quarters. There's Chris. That's the guy I was telling you about. Real cool dude. Really cool dude. Maybe one day I'll meet him in person. But he was really nice on a Facebook chat. This is the astronaut station. Station. Station? Station. Oh, glass. I feel like a bird flying in. <laughs> and here's your weightless gym. We just saw a uh, little movie. They're working on that. Working out. Imagine riding that unicycle upside down on the ceiling. Okay. You could do that. Uh, no. <laughs> Whoa! How badass is this? And so what we're seeing today is a proliferation of new ideas and new concepts. It's almost like it's a Whoa. Check this out, guys. How cool is this? Look at this. They're going back to the moon, guys. Check this out. There's the rocket. How badass is this? Pretty killer, huh? Is 
the prototypes, what's to come? Pretty killer, huh? There's our future. All right, check this out, guys. Here's what we can do today. Okay, so we're gonna be going and seeing, we're gonna be passing by different areas of interest across the Johnson Space Center campus until we eventually reach our destination of the Apollo Mission Control Center. That sounds cool. All right. And what was your name? My name is Abby. Abby, Hi. I'm Jeff. Thank you so kindly. And this well, is nice Diane. Hi, Hi, Jeff and Diane. <laughs> Lovely to have you on board today. Okay, fantastic. All right, folks. Well, good afternoon and welcome to the NASA Tram Tour. This is the white tour going to the historic Apollo Mission Control. My name is Abby. I will be your host for this tour today. And your driver's name is Anita. Everybody say hi to Anita. Hi, Anita. All right, well, she's actually all the way over there, but that's okay, she probably heard you anyway. All right, so we're here to make sure that your tour to Johnson Space Center is fun and informational, but free from incident. So before we get started, let's review some important safety information. Please remain seated at all times while the tram is in motion, keeping those arms, legs, heads, and tails inside of the vehicle at all times. And this is a non-eating, non-smoking, non-vaping tour. Drinks are permitted on the tram as long as they've got a secure lid. And if you're traveling with any small children whose feet do not fully reach the floor, we kindly ask that you please seat them in the center seat between two adults if possible, and children ages four and under should be in the lap of an adult. This tour is scheduled to last approximately one hour. Restrooms will not be available, so hopefully you wouldn't beforehand, folks. And once this tram starts moving, you are committing to remain on the entire length of this tour. We cannot bring you back to Space Center Houston any earlier unless it is an absolute dire emergency. No exceptions. And again, my name is Abby and our driver's name is Anita. And it's looking like we will be ready to depart shortly. Just as soon as we can pull this other tram around in just a moment. Our uh, Anita, whenever you're ready, we're all clear. Houston and heading to Johnson Space Center, home of Mission Control for over 50 years. In 1961, NASA was granted funding for a new field center that would eventually be called the Lyndon B. Johnson Space Center. As you can imagine, many cities were interested in becoming the heart of human spaceflight, but NASA eventually selected Houston because of its established infrastructure, growing ship channel, and large engineering sector.
houses the last and only fully flight certified Saturn V rocket in the entire world. Made up of components from the canceled Apollo's 18, 19, and 20 missions. To the right of that white building, you can see two mock-up rockets on display. The shorter rocket with the red top is a model of a Mercury Redstone rocket. It was initially designed as an intercontinental ballistic missile capable of carrying a nuclear warhead, but the Redstone ICBM was repurposed by NASA to carry their crewed Mercury capsules into space. And one of the Mercury capsules, the Faith 7, can be seen in the Starship Gallery back at Space Center Houston. And while these missions ranged only from around 15 minutes all the way to 33 hours, they provided essential science needed to land a man on the moon before the end of the 1960s. And the second rocket next to it on the yellow scaffolding is Little Joe 2. It was a test rocket used before the launch of the Saturn rockets to test the launch escape system, the tower-like structure on top of the rocket, as well as the Apollo capsule's parachutes. And some of this technology is still being used with modern rocket design today. Now, this tour does not stop at Rocket Park. However, if you would like to see these rockets and the Saturn V inside of the building, take a red tour today. And this large gray building on the right-hand side is Building 32, the Space Environment Simulation Laboratory. Inside this building are two large vacuum chambers, Chamber A tests spacecraft, and Chamber B tests space suits. This facility uses nitrogen gas and heat lamps to test the limits and durability of the equipment in temperature extremes ranging from negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 160 degrees Celsius all the way up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit or 150 degrees Celsius. Most famously, this facility tested the Apollo lunar landers in the 1960s and early 1970s. And this building is still in use today and most recently tested the James Webb Space Telescope before its launch in December of last year. And in 1985, those very test chambers you see off to your left were designated as National Historic Landmarks. And speaking of National Historic Landmarks, we have two here at Johnson Space Center, and we are currently pulling into the other, which happens to be our destination, the Christopher C. Kraft Jr. Mission Control Center. It was named in 2011 to honor the first flight director for American spaceflight. In addition to developing the entire concept of mission control and designing the control room itself, Chris Kraft served as one of the lead flight directors during the Mercury program, and head of mission operations for the Gemini and Apollo programs. This building controlled early spaceflight missions beginning in 1965 with Gemini 4, and it is still used today for the International Space Station, the commercial crew programs, and soon the manned Artemis missions to the moon. All right, folks, we're going to be pulling up to this awning just up ahead. I kindly ask that you please remain seated until I dismiss you. I'm going to come up from the back and dismiss you all by tram car. And when I do dismiss you, please exit to the right and the right-hand side only. But in the meantime, folks, hang tight and remain seated. Whoa. reason you cannot climb those 87 stairs please see our lovely driver Anita and she will help you up the elevator Anita you have anything to add to that we only are allowed six people in the elevator at a time uh, so you're allowed one loved one with that person uh, if you can take the stairs you have to keep these six so please folks that elevator is very old and very slow I can actually <laughs> beat it to the top uh, before it even gets to the second floor um, so please save the elevator for those who absolutely need it. If you have a family member who needs it, but you yourself can take the stairs, we very kindly ask that you please take the stairs. All right, folks. And one last thing before we go upstairs. 
So Anita just said this previously, but one floor below us in the, I in the uh, Apollo mission control will be the active ISS mission control. We are not going in there today. However, the walls in this stairwell are very thin, and if you speak loud enough in that stairwell, those flight controllers can hear you. So just out of respect to the flight controllers who are guarding the lives of the 10 astronauts that are currently on board the ISS, we ask that you please keep your voices to an absolute minimum when you are in that hallway. All right, well that's all I've got, folks. Let's go upstairs and see this piece of history. All right. And again, if you need the elevator, please see Anita. And let's go, folks. Nice and quiet, folks, up upstairs. Pretty cool, huh? You know, the six, the 86 stairs, I, would, I can make it. Buzz? What was the third astronaut on Apollo 11 that didn't get to go to the moon? Oh, doggone it. Oh, I don't know. No, doggone it. Uh, answer is? Michael Collins. Oh. Uh, That's going to bother me if I didn't get the answer. So we are going to take the stairs. More stairs. I took the elevator, didn't you? Yes, sir. All right, hard part's over, folks. You did it. Just pick any row that you like and move all the way down to the end of the row. Hard part's over, folks. You did it. Thank you, Abby. <laughs> all right, just pick any row that you like and move all the way down to the end. Hard part's over, folks. You did it. I would like to welcome you to the historic Mission Operations Control Room. I served as the flight director during the descent and landing of the first American astronauts on the moon. In 2019, this room from the consoles with related flight documents and artifacts to the carpet, wallpaper, and mission medallions was restored and preserved to the Apollo era. Even the viewing room seats you are sitting in are original, as are the telephone and communications booths and the simulation control room. The large screens at the front of the room display trajectory data, which we use to control the spacecraft. The clocks above the screens helped us to keep track of mission milestones, including how long the rocket engine fired, and a loss of radio signal times as the spacecraft moved behind the moon. And the two viewing room televisions to your upper left and right displayed historical network news coverage as it was broadcast. You're about to be transported back to the afternoon of July 20th, 1969, as Apollo 11 astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin descended to the lunar surface. Four teams of flight controllers worked around the clock in support of a mission, monitoring every aspect of the spacecraft's life support, fuel levels, altitude, and communications. On that day, my team was responsible for guiding Lunar Module Eagle to a safe landing on the moon. 
You will hear our voices and the voices of the astronauts as we encounter a series of unexpected computer alarms. This is the Apollo 11 descent, just as we experienced it. Roger. Uh, filter is go. Copy. Filter go. Altitude 5200 feet. Okay, all flight controllers gonna go for landing. Retro. Go. Right up. Go. Right. Go. Control. Go. Telcom. Go. GNC. Go. Econ. Go. Surgeon. Go. Capcom, we're go for landing. Eagle Houston, you're go for landing. Over. Copy, filter, go. Roger, this thing, go for landing. 3,000 feet. Yeah. Stop alarm. Same time, we're going. Same time, we're going. Flight flight on right on, real good. Roger. Into the egg, 47 degrees. Roger. I'll take you in the How's our margin looking, Bob? It looks okay. We're okay. going to hide. Roger. Eagle looking great. You're going. Two, three,
reverse which is in the proper position. Okay, we have a good side down. This has to be the proudest day of our lives. And for people all over the world, I am sure that they too join with Americans in recognizing what an immense feat this is. Because of what you have done, the heavens have become a part of man's world. And as you talk to us from the sea of tranquility, it inspires us to redouble our efforts to bring peace and tranquility to earth. For one priceless moment in the whole history of man, all the people on this earth are truly one. One in their pride in what you have done, and one in our prayers that you will return safely to earth. Thank you, Mr. President. It's a great honor and privilege for us to be here representing not only the United States, but and a peace of all nations, and with interest and a curiosity and, and with the vision for the future. Uh, honor for us to be able to participate here today. And thank you very much, and I look forward, all of us look forward to seeing you on the Hornet on Thursday. Look forward to that very much, sir. Under the command of Mission Control, a fleet of naval helicopters from the USS Hornet were sent to retrieve the Apollo 11 crew. Thank you. 
I'd be nervous too. I must say, guys, this was highly impressive in person. If you never, ever do one thing in your life, this is it. of history here. I literally have goosebumps. Wow. And here are the phone booths we're talking about. Don't open it. <laughs> yeah. I was expecting a payphone for some reason. I know. There you go, guys. One of them was harmless. Nah. That was you. I told him not to call me too late, but you know. <laughs> we're back out here in the lobby. Thank you so much for Absolutely. your help. No this is historically amazing. Yeah, I love it. These are the actual oh, chairs. You're actually super comfy. You're more welcome to sit down if you want. Well, I'll they be don't scared. don't make furniture like that anymore. Oh, no. But I, I'd be scared to. <laughs> oh, you're fine. We, we're 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 Mostly okay. parents with unruly children that can't sit for 14 minutes. Now, that trash can doesn't look <laughs> no, historically no. correct. I'm fairly sure that's true. <laughs> well, guys, there you go. <laughs> Diane, what do you think? Cold, it's cold. It's not far out, Nito. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cold. <laughs> oh, I forgot to get this. They did a lot of uh, missions from this room, including uh, shuttle launches as well. Really? Obviously, they didn't do it with, with the monitors and computers that they had. <laughs> All right. So, how old is this elevator? As old as the building. As old as the building. So, we're talking... 60, 60, 61, something Well, guys, we're going to take a trip in a historical elevator. Elvis probably took his elevator, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure they didn't make him take the stairs. That's what I'm saying. Be in the same space as Elvis. Oh, my God. All right, guys. Because he started the space race. Yeah, he started the whole thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Nixon took over. Okay. Well, yeah, I was too. confused on that. Yeah. I was seeing Nixon up there, but then they were talking about Kennedy. So, okay. Well, it's the anniversary of uh, Kennedy's death, isn't it? 
Yeah. Wing was shot. Yeah. 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 I've actually been there. Been there. I, living there is kind of hard not to be there. I actually walk by it without knowing it until I go, oh, Gretchen, you no. Know. You stand on the spot. Hi, guys. We're out. Yeah, we gotta go this way. This ends our tour. And someone was breaking rules. She had to leave her drink. And here's the next tour. Woohoo! Guys are gonna enjoy it, it's amazing. Wow. How cool is this? We can't get too far, guys. Because as far as we could get. But how cool is this? And look. It's amazing. And this is the building we were just in. Oh wow, check this out. How cool is this, guys? Well, Abby, first of all, thank you for being on the Collector Zone. Of course. And this was a wonderful experience. I know the hair on my arms are standing up. My heart was racing. You live this experience personally almost daily. Is that right? I do. I so. Uh... Uh, it depends on the day, but I can be here at Mission Control up to four or five times a day. And honestly, every time I go in there, it's like experiencing it all over for the first time for me, really. And like, I get goosebumps every single time. I have a history degree, so anything that is, you know, 60s or 70s centric, I love it. And, you know, it, it's just so special to be such a big part of history and to, you know, gaze upon it every day. But now I gotta get going, the, what, the driver's waving me down. Go, but, go ahead. But uh, shout out to everybody watching The Collector Zone. Come and visit us at uh, Space Center Houston sometime and take a tour with me. Oh. Right <laughs> Thank you, Abby. Of course. All right. Oop. All right, everybody, welcome back to the tram. Just a reminder to please remain seated at all times while the tram is in motion and keep those arms, legs, and heads in the vehicle at all times. All right, Anita, whenever you're ready, we are all set for takeoff. All right, let's go. With Apollo 11 completed, NASA had met the challenge set by the late President Kennedy in 1961. However, the public quickly grew disinterested in the Apollo program, and people thought the program should end since America had won the space race against the Soviet Union by beating them to the moon. Yet, scientific research on the moon still had to be done. NASA continued pushing forward with six more successful missions, resulting in scientific breakthroughs and incredible stories of spaceflight. incredible stories that I just previously mentioned is widely considered NASA and Mission Control's finest hour and you very well might be familiar with it. As the 1970s rolled in, NASA intended to send a third mission, Apollo 13, to land on the moon. With public interest at a low, NASA saw these missions as a routine part of their agency's life. However, two days into the mission, the spacecraft was shaken when an explosion happened outside. To their horror, the crew knew that their spacecraft was critically damaged after seeing oxygen venting out into space. With over half of their oxygen depleted and all fuel cells shut down in the explosion, the lunar landing was no longer possible. Using the lunar module as a lifeboat, flight controllers were able to save the lives of those three astronauts, 
and bring them home safely. So Apollo 13 is widely considered a successful failure. They weren't able to land on the moon, however the crew made it home, and in a damaged spacecraft nonetheless, which is the primary goal of any mission. All right, and just back to the right is Building 20, which houses the Department of Safety and Mission Assurance, which researches the safety criteria for each spacecraft. But beyond that, Building 20 also happens to be the most environmentally friendly building on the Johnson Space Center campus and is made entirely out of recycled materials. Did I know? Now, as we've been driving along, you might have noticed these rather vintage-looking bicycles, either here on racks, or there's some just off to the right over there, or off in the parking lot. Now, Johnson Space Center is over 1,600 acres wide and has more than 100 buildings, so to allow the employees to get from one place to another in a more efficient and environmentally friendly fashion, JSC provides these free-range bikes for them. And many of these lovingly maintained old Schwinn bicycles date back to the early 1960s when the facility was established. So that means that today's JSC employees may be riding the exact same bike as an iconic Apollo astronaut. So off to your left is Building 17, which houses, houses of NASA's Orion spacecraft office. Orion is the capsule NASA is using as part of the Artemis missions to return American astronauts to the moon by 2025 and then take them to Mars by 2045. Orion's design builds upon the success of the earlier Apollo spacecraft since it is autonomous, reusable, and can receive upgrades over time rather than be discontinued after a single mission. Orion is currently making an uncrewed flight around the moon and back before sending any astronauts. Dumped as Artemis 1, this mission launched about a week ago on the 16th at around 12.30 in the morning after months of delays. It lays the foundation for future Artemis missions venturing to the moon and beyond. But unlike the Apollo lunar missions, Artemis is a partnership between 13 different nations as of October of last year. International participation is governed by the Artemis Accords, which is a practical set of principles to guide space exploration cooperations among nations participating in lunar exploration. With these partnerships in place, NASA will be able to send more astronauts to the moon of different genders and nationalities. In fact, during our return to the moon, NASA will have a woman step out and walk on the moon for the first time in human history. Her name is Jessica Watkins. She is currently an astronaut on board the ISS, and she happens to be one of the chief science officers for Space Center Houston. Yep, NASA was able to send astronauts to the moon on just about five megabytes of computing power. That's less than a quarter of what Facebook takes up on your phone. Wow. <laughs> So as we pass by Rocket Park, the size of the white building on the left can give you a size estimate of the Saturn V, but also the SLS, since the SLS is only two feet shorter than the Saturn V. Wow. the SLS and the Saturn V are single-use rockets. Today's rocket technology strives to utilize partially reusable rockets. As we turn the corner and just off to your left now, you'll see a Falcon 9 booster from SpaceX on display. This particular rocket is entirely reusable and was used twice in 2017 to go to the International Space Station. Right next to it, you can see a mock-up of the Space Shuttle Independence atop a real Queen of the Skies Boeing 747 shuttle carrier. While the Independence on top is a mock-up, the plane below it is very real and is the actual shuttle carrier that has flown no fewer than 155 separate missions bearing the Space Shuttle on top. You can go inside both the shuttle and the plane and walk out to the Falcon 9 rocket at Independence Plaza, back at Space Center Houston. Now, usually, if you pass through this tunnel, you can see Pico the Alligator 
off to the left. Oh, okay. But the past few days, he's been kind of MIA, so we've been assuming he's been off in one of the shaded, uh, foresty areas of the bayou just off to the right over here. But sometimes he likes to sunbathe off to the left over here. Is this the one alligator? Uh, we actually have three of them because oh. one, two, and three. And as we pass through that dark and foreboding black hole of a tunnel, I would like to officially welcome you back to Space Center Houston. As you've seen, it is a very exciting time for space exploration, but unfortunately, this concludes our light tour today. I kindly ask that you please make sure you have all of your personal belongings and children with you. Any items or children left behind on the tram will be launched into space on Artemis 2 sometime in 2024. <laughs> so we are going to be dropping you all off here at Independence Plaza for your exploratory convenience. I ask that you please remain seated until Anita can get this gate open for you all. And when we do open up that gate, you may exit to the left and the left-hand side only, but please remain seated until we can get that gate open for you. Check this out, guys. We are going in. Go check this out. Yeah. But this is the actual one. So let's check this out, guys. Take the tour in reverse. Check this out. How cool is this, guys? We're inside the airplane. You know, you wouldn't think it would be this crowded today, but it is. A lot of people are into space. The final frontier. No, wrong thing. Probably right thing. Who knows? Whoa. You can control putting the space shuttle on top of the plane. How cool is that? We got a wind tunnel going here. Oh, I see. This is a stress test area. <laughs> Whoa. How cool is this? to move it across the country to get it from California back to Cape Canaveral for the next launch. When John Kiker proposed his piggybacking idea to NASA officials, they were skeptical. 
We played some very bad landings and we banged up the wind. By refining the models and test after test, John Kiker and his team finally achieved success. So we talked to our airlines people and asked them what we should do. They recommended that we partially deploy the speedbirds and body plan. This has made the model fly. And here's the actual seats. I wonder if this is a VIP section. That is, I'm sure. Whoa. Pretty cool. 170 people. And this is the to make for the aerospace. Uh, it is strong, it's lighter So all the paneling on it? Yeah, I was allowed to that when you get the stuff in that, Push a button. What do you have? You push a button and it turn. It shows you the heat, the outside tiles, how much heat it can take. Really? That's cool. You want to see it? Yeah, let's check this out. See, we got our own personal guy here. He's been here two times here so far. This is like my third time. Third time? But I was young. And I didn't understand at all. Okay. Okay, so you push a button to apply heat to this tile. So that's the outside is hot and it'll show how hot it gets. But then you touch this and it's nothing. Like nothing. So it'll start getting hot. You can feel the heat. Oh yeah. But then you touch here and it's nothing. Oh wow, so this is the towel outside you got yeah. still. Wow, and we're hitting uh, 400 degrees. Press the button to apply thermal towel. So you, go ahead and do it. It's already pressed. Okay. Yeah, it's cool. Learn something new. I have to say, yes. So now we're exiting. Oh, wow. This is so badass. So we got a little crowd going on here. Yes, we are here. Where are we at? Here, oh. going up to the flight deck. So we're going into the flight deck. All right. I wonder how many people fit in there. Not too many with that big butt. <laughs> you have something to share with the class? <laughs> you have to edit that out. Or body. Pretty cool. Diana's tracking out, make sure nothing opens up. Oh, I felt air. Oh, I was like, where is it from? It's there. Oh, wow, there is air. We have to keep the place cool. And that's sleeping bag outfit. Oh, 
Got some lockers. <coughs> There's a CD there. Personal items from 2002. That was her locker. Can't find anything open, huh? That's kind of cool. Wow. Well, is that airlock? Down. You want to secure the hatch? And we're progressing through the shuttle. Share your story if you follow. Alright, let's go. No, it's a boring one. I was babysitting, watching it. I think everybody was watching it. I was working at a video store, so we had all TVs on one channel. So, talk about experience you'll never forget. Cousin's house, one turn on TV, um, babysitting her two kids, and I saw it, and I just started bawling. Oh, yeah, I know. Shocked. Hopefully you guys can see some of this. <laughs> That's where we're at before. How cool is this, guys? Pretty cute. And there's another level we can go to.
the view is amazing guys let's check out what's in here Check out the cockpit. Check this out, guys. Oh, and this is where we're at right now. What a piece of history. Wow, how cool is that, guys? And then here is the cockpit. Now it's glory. But, like, when they were like that, they would do so much when they were like, oh. I just so scared. Pretty killer, huh? And we're coming down the stairs. How do you get another look? This is amazing. Here's the undercarriage of the plane. Pretty badass, huh? Check out the engine. Whoa, right? So we're going in to check out the rocket. So, uh, yeah, man. All right. It's pretty massive. Oh, whoa. Look at that. I know. <laughs> this doesn't do it justice. This thing is huge. This is really amazing. You're going to have to go to the very beginning of the very front and take a video of the way to the back. I'm going to wrap it around. Look at that, guys. How cool is that? It's badass. It looks so little on camera. It's so big. I am totally blown away. Can you imagine seeing this launch in person? See if I can get closer for you guys. There you go. 
Hope they can read all this. Oh man. Look at this. And we got another rocket engine over here, huh? Wow, well, yeah, we could get closer. Whoa. This is killer. Let me see if I can zoom in here. I have a focusing problem, so hopefully it clear up. There we go. Look at that. Get close up at the engine here. How cool is that? Freaking amazing. I'm gonna say this is really badass. Hope you guys can see all this. Let me see if I can zoom in closer. We can read it. It's really cool. Here, you get to go in. Get a closer look. So let's check this out. Whoa. This is so massive. Let's see if we can zoom in here. Hopefully, you can see all this. A little closer look. Come here. And hopefully it focuses for come you. Come here, come here. Uh, not, it, not focusing here, guys. There you go. Let's check out this other end here. We can get a better look. How badass is this, guys? I must say, I've never been this close to a rocket before. Pretty cool. Let's go this way here, check out the other end. Here is the front end. Try to get a better look at that when these people are not around. Yeah. This is really massive. So we 
get a little closer. Let's see here. Get closer for you guys. Literally, nose is literally touching the building almost. There you go. Sorry about the focusing, guys. Move out a little bit. There you go. Truly amazing. Let's check out the statue here. Get a little closer. See here. Really cool. Your ingenuity, intelligence, and an unparalleled team. NASA turned tragedy into triumph. So we're gonna walk around here, check out this other side. Oh look, there's a plaque. Go walk the other side here. Give you a better look. This guy's got to check this out in person. All right, hopefully you see all this. people. Sorry guys. So badass. So I must say I'm totally blown away. Check that out. You know, I didn't notice the banners. All the Apollo missions. with your patches. This is phenomenal. See if I can get you closer. These engines here. Hopefully, you'll focus. There you go. This blows me away.
hopefully you see all this. Found problems focusing, sorry guys. Yeah man. Cree killer. And there's stuff here apparently missing. Now look, a lost sheep. She found her way. The other one is the training facility. What other one? Another tram. Oh. We get to float. Well, you don't no. get to. Oh. Uh -huh. You get to see where they train. I don't experience weightlessness. I've been experiencing weight my, my whole life. This is that phenomenal. Other, that other tour must be the one that I'm thinking of where you were looking down onto the... Oh, for the bird's eye view? And there's another tour they said with the moon rocks. No, she said you can't go in there. Oh, they had moon rocks on property. They had moon you, just rocks on you just can't see them. Let me see if we can get close up for, these, for you guys for these engines here. All right, hopefully I'll stay focused for you guys. I know when I zoom in, no problems staying focused because I'm so close. This thing is so huge. Having problems focusing. This is a scale. Of how huge is this? And if we're standing this close, when it's taken off, we'll be melted. Yeah. Like in an Ian Jones movie. Turn the skulls. So here's a little bit closer up. Look here. I'm really fascinated how this looks. So badass. And that's your 360 around the rocket. All right, let's check out those rockets. How killer is this? Do not climb on display. When is, when is, one of these carried the chimpanzee to space. Oh no, that poor little guy. You know, growing up, I heard putting animals in space and not retrieving them. That broke my little heart. One flight carried ham, the chimpanzee. Wish they had a choice if they wanted to or not. They didn't. Let's see what this plaque says over here. Little Joe, too.
Wow. Just wow. All right. So here's our pictures we're getting developed. Look. Oh, wow, cool. <laughs> they're all the same picture? Yeah, they're all the same picture. Okay. So all you can do is the best package we offer is a 35. Okay. You get three prints and you get digitals that come with it. So you can pick one from each to do that. Okay. You can mix and match. Okay, thank you. I thought there were three. No, I just have to get three pictures. Well, guys, here, here's where we're at. So we got some pictures here. Can you see? Oh. Them? oh, I don't know what happened to that one. There. Oh well. So basically, we get these little cards here. Now you put it right between there. So we got the cards, and you scan them. There's the barcode here, and it shows up this picture right here. And it's only one picture. Yeah, it's just the same picture. Well, guys, this is going to wrap up the video. That's pretty cool. If you ever get a chance to come here to NASA in Houston, it's really badass. I want to thank you guys for hanging out in Collector Zone, spending time enjoying this awesome tour. Hope you enjoyed it. As usual, we'll catch you in the next one. Layers, guys.